you know, don't be intimidated by me. Um, y'all are going to do fine. Um, give y'all a round of applause for making it this far. That, that is amazing within itself. I was a TA last semester for 2140. So even though I have never been in y'all's shoes, um, I have helped students like prepare for this. And I understand that y'all are like super like over this assignment and ready to get it um, out of the way. So um, definitely congratulations on making it this far and you know staying in the race. Um, a couple of rules, we're gonna be really respectful in here um, during the crossfire and um, yes, in the grand crossfire. Um, a piece of advice is to not let your opposition um, a little dog you uh, talk. You do not want to get little dog because that's where you lose um, uh, the debate, right? And I'm it's competitive, so you know. <laughs> Just wanted to share that. Um, if I could have each one of you tell me like who's affirmative and who's negative and what uh, positions each one of you holds, that would be great. And I'm going to start with you, Valerie. Um. Overcoming all others that try to overcome it. 
We define the fossil fuel economy as an economy built on the reliance on fossil fuels such as natural gas and oil and interdependent on fossil fuels. Framework. While fossil fuels were the only known widespread fuel source for hundreds of years and built the world as we know it, the already observed and predicted environmental consequences vastly outweigh the benefits of the continued dependence on fossil fuels as the primary source of energy. The majority of the world's oil supplies is produced by a few regions, making other countries dependent on imports in order to run their economy, which can cause uncertainty when one of the world's biggest suppliers of oil is war-torn. War -torn. Contention one, the planet is suffering. The carbon emissions caused by the burning of fossil fuels are the main contributor to global warming, NBC. United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres warns, continue, er, warns countries are sleepwalking to climate catastrophe if they continue to rely on fossil fuels, according to the New York Times. Climate change is real and it's not slowing down anytime soon, especially if we continue down the road we are on. There is no question that it would be costly and ambitious, but the world needs to shift its focus to renewable energy sources that limit emissions into the world, Earth's atmosphere if we stand a chance to have an inhabitable planet for decades to come. We are by no means suggesting quitting fossil fuels cold turkey. We understand that this is not feasible. However, we must begin the shift towards more, more renewable sources of energy. We are racing against the clock of both climate change and the complete depletion of fossil fuel deposits around the world. Contention two, dependence on trade is detrimental to the economy. According to the US Energy Information Administration, the United States, Russia, Saudi Arabia, Iraq, and Canada are the top five oil producers in the world producing a combined 51% of the world's oil. Because these countries' domination over this, in, over this industry, other countries are forced to rely on their trade policies, taxes, and political situations to remain stable. In early 2022, Russia launched an invasion on the Ukraine, sparking economic sanctions from many countries, including the United States and the United Nations. Many countries, including the United States, stopped the import of Russian oil to order, in order to punish their economy. However, this did not come without consequences. In late March of 2022, gasoline prices were averaging four to five dollars per gallon across the country and approaching six dollars in some states. While this may seem like only one commodity that was affected, people need their cars in order to drive to work and to shop. Because of these prices, many people were hesitant to drive more than necessary, and others were unable to afford to fill their tanks to drive to work. The United States economy should not be so dependent on another country in order to run efficiently. Globalization and trade have been very important forces in spreading culture and making commodities available globally that would not be available to certain areas otherwise. However, entire countries should not be dependent on trade in order to keep their lights on. Although the United States is the largest producer of oil in the world, nearly 50% of that oil comes from one state, Texas. The majority of states do not produce oil at all and are dependent on interstate commerce in order to keep their lights on. In 2021, the state of Texas experienced a record-breaking freeze, and according to NPR, the national average for gas prices went from just under $2 per gallon to around $2.50 per gallon. When disasters, natural or man-made, strike against one of the world's biggest oil suppliers, everyone suffers. Regions that are unable to produce oil should not be dependent on other areas. More renewable sources of energy solve this problem. Any building can have a solar panel, any open field can hold a windmill, and any river can hold a hydroelectric dam. While some may call these renewable energy sources an eyesore, we should really see them as moving towards a future of independence, self-sufficiency, and a healthier Earth. Fossil fuels are what got us where we are today, but we affirm once again that this house regrets the continued dominance of the fossil fuel economy for the sake of the future of our planet and our national and world economy. fossil fuels will cause an extreme and unheard of rise in mining for the minerals used to create electric car engines such as Tesla and solar panels, as well as other needs for the minerals, Manhattan Institute. 
Fossil fuels will be needed to create a cleaner and more renewable energy, so completely expelling them is not an option. Many clean energy solutions require a material co called diesperazium. Diesperazium is harmful and toxic to workers who mine them on a daily basis. Many of the workers who are har harvesting and mining these materials are children, which means our children, which means renewable energy directly benefits from child labor. This is not an ethical choice. This mineral is toxic and dangerous to the children who mine this on a daily basis and the workers who are in factories working unreasonable shifts and being exposed to these dangerous chemicals. Another problem with clean energy is that no source of energy is ethical or truly clean. We have yet to find a solution or substitute for oil and gas. Technology is used to distract to extract oil is continuously improving. This means it is a more economically smart choice for games. Fossil fuels are considered non-toxic and stable, which cannot be the same for clean energy sources I stated previously. They are easy to track and transport, rent hard. And they are also the cheapest form of energy today. According to CNBC, one in five Americans are running out of money before their next paycheck. Americans are already being stretched too thin financially, which means we cannot afford to switch to more expensive options. Americans are struggling to put food on the table. We aren't the only ones who struggle to adapt to clean energy solutions. Third world countries already struggle with money and developing their country. This would set them back and cost them billions of dollars that they don't have. Meanwhile, the fossil fuel industry provides millions of jobs. The use of fossil fuels have greatly shaped and developed this country and the world. Our daily, night, our daily lives as we know it would not be possible if we did not have fossil fuels. Air travel would not be possible if we did not have fossil fuels. This is just one example of how fossil fuels have benefited us as a society and an economy. We would greatly be set back as a society if fossil fuels were not a part of it. Another problem with clean energy is it takes fossil fuels to create clean energy machines. According to the Manhattan Institute, the energy equivalent of 100 barrels of oil used in the process to create a single battery that can store equivalent to one barrel of oil. Also from the Manhattan Institute is that by 2030, 10 million tons of batteries per year will become garbage, which will then pollute our water sources. This is just one of green energy's many shortcomings. Hydro dams also create pollution and release chemicals into our water systems. Regret, uh, why would we regret something that is, why would we feel regret or something that has changed our life, has changed our lives and advanced our society. Fossil fuels have opened so much doors, so many doors for society. We would not be merely as advanced in science, medicine, and in travel. Fossil fuels were necessary for the time, as science was not advanced enough for non-fossil fuel alternatives. Economy. Sorry. This does not. This house. Thus, this house does not regret the use of fossil fuels in our economy as they benefit us. Process for the last two speakers that just spoke. Ask questions. Two minutes. Can you take two minutes to prepare for uh, you, can, you have two minutes of prep in its entirety. So, like, if you take like 15 seconds of prep now, then for the next speech in which you would want to take prep, you mm -hmm. could only take like a minute and 45. Does that make sense? I don't take 30 seconds of prep. Can you take 30 seconds of prep, please? Yeah, I'm sure that. Y'all can prep all different times. Fossil fuels are more economical, but 
as we go into the future, we are running low on fossil fuel deposits. So as that supply goes down, the demand is not going to go down. And so we have to figure out a way to replace that. So you said that uh, fossil fuels currently have a lot of jobs. So, but, and then also you mentioned something about how factory workers and child labor is something that obviously needs to be addressed whenever we're talking about certain types of minerals. So wouldn't it be necessary to create the jobs that would be needed to uh, create more sustainable sources of energy? And obviously we need to address the issues of factory conditions and obviously child labor laws in the United States. That's not what's happening in the United States. But we obviously need to address other humanitarian issues. That's not what we're talking about right now. That's a really good question. Um, <laughs> fossil fuels, the oil and gas employs 6 million Americans. That means 6 million Americans would have to find other jobs and they have families to provide for. Well, they wouldn't be losing their job right now. They would not be cutting off every single source of fossil fuels right now. It would be a slow decrease. They could transfer their skills into other sources of energy or we will probably still need to use fossil fuels forever, basically, but we won't have enough to use them forever if we continue using them at the rate of our power. Yes, but, you know, if we're not going to use them as... Oh, just... You don't want to finish this sentence, you just can't oh. start making new Oh, stuff. okay. But, I mean, it's a little bit All right. Um, <laughs> does anybody prep or anything for the next week? Mr. Rico, whenever you are ready, um, the time will start as soon as you begin um, talking. If y'all need prep time, let me know because y'all are um, sidelining right now. Yeah. And that's like the conversations perfect. you're having right now is what prep time is for. Yeah. So if y'all need prep time, um, go ahead and mention that now. 30 seconds. 30 seconds? Okay. No. Sorry.